Why men use steroids. This is a research report perspective in America, the National Institute on Drug Abuse. On their website, they've published a statement document, Steroids and Other Appearance and Performance Enhancing Drugs Research Report. It's incredible, and it's updated 2018. And not much has changed in two years, but it's overall updated. And there's a lot I agree with, and I could work off, and we could discuss. And there's some points that I could see uh, they really don't understand and see in the nitty gritty. But this is great. This is really out there. It's very detailed. Right off the bat, on their introduction, they talk about that steroids are used mostly by non-athletes versus athletes. They get it. That's a big point. It's used, they say, from their research, and they cite a lot of research, it's used for improving muscle mass and, of course, athletic performance. Now, the specificity of the athletic performance is not necessarily itself for football, baseball, and hockey, for so, so to speak. It's for overall performance enhancing, which is utilized in men that are not in organized sports. This is incredible. This is, it's coming there. They're getting it. It's really true. They also say some of the highlights, these are the highlights. It can boost the user's confidence and, of course, strength. Realize that? That's coming from the Fed now in the research. It boosts confidence. Let's keep going. They also highlight that the user, when stopping the drugs, can cause depression. And often, they say, often leads to resumption in use. And they characterize this as a steroid use disorder. And up to 32% of men, young men, that get involved with using steroids can become dependent. 32%. This is incredible. This is why my message is so powerful and so strong, and I've been giving it for years. Of course, they discuss the usual head-to-toe side effects. They show that most steroids are used by men in their 20s and 30s. There also is adolescent use, which is growing and unbelievable. The research shows that some adolescents use steroids in part as a motivation and a pattern of their classic high-risk behavior, such as driving cars fast, drinking and driving, carrying guns, not wearing helmets on motorcycles, and other drug use. That's incredible. We're talking about the motivations for why men use steroids. Now, what do I see? As a physician who has been working with anabolic steroid users openly for over a decade, I've experienced thousands of steroid users who have come to me and trust. In my experience, I found that men that are using anabolic androgenic steroids, they use it, and they're 99% non-athletes. These are not athletes in my clinic, thousands, just like they said, the non-athlete. They're looking to increase muscle mass and strength. That's initially, that's the, not, the motivation for most men. Some men just do it because they're small and that bothers them and they want to get bigger. And is that pathologic? So they start it because they're small. I've heard men say, Doc, I, I maxed out 120 pounds at 5'10", 150 at six foot or so. They've they, they've ate food, they've increased training, and it's their genetic potential. So they took, they took a sober risk. They realized that they're gonna take steroids to gain weight. Absolutely incredible. Now, what happens once they initiate the steroid use? It's true. These men have told me, and I want this to come out, that they've had increased confidence and an increased perceived mood and well-being. Now, look at the studies they've talked about. There is alterations in GABA, central nervous system, neurotransmitters, serotonin, 
and dopamine. We know that this can lead to a low-grade high. It's not like cocaine. It's not like heroin. But it can make the user feel so well, apart from the actual strength and the athletic performance, they feel well when they're on the drug. Men tell me that they excel in their studies if they're in college, guys. Men tell me that they excel at work and they get along better with their coworkers and they do better and they sell more things and they feel better. And of course, almost every single man enjoys the sex, the hypersexual feelings, that feeling of being confident and sexual. Not all men have that. And some men that have that, they go up to a higher level and now you can start seeing where the interplay is. They can become addicted because you're on an agent, you love it, there's issues going on and changing in the brain, all these neurotransmitters, and then there comes the day you have to get off. And that's what we need to spend more time, more resources into understanding the research on this. Because what happens is they do get addicted. It's not like heroin and cocaine, but it's a low-grade addiction, and men want to stay on it. Now, my word to you is that if you're in your 20s, you've used some of these drugs, it led to enjoyment, and you come off, you don't feel well. It's a withdrawal. So men go on and they continue use. They can't get off. This is the scenario that we see, and they've stated it in the research. So I want to hear from you, please, if you're comfortable here, if you're comfortable. Why did you use steroids? Why did you start? Why was, what was your motivation? What did you do? What happened? Side effects. Where are you now? Are you blasting and cruising? Have you used PCT? Did it help? Are you on TRT? What's your age? Set up aliases, please. I love this. The, the research is important. It's coming. It's coming. It's not here yet. It's spotty. It's crude. More is coming because there's millions of men on steroids and testosterone. And so many men say to me, Doc, it's not all that bad. It's not all that bad. Stop with your negative. Stop. I am here to bring truth. I want to see in these comments what's really going on so the world can see it openly and we could share and we could heal and we can be open with education. I really hope this helps. Thank you so much for all your comments and thank you for trusting me.